thank you for clicking on this video. Today I'm talking about how I turned a 3D print into a cake. And yes, there are a ton of steps in between, but I am really excited to share with you how I was able to do it. I love creating really fun and exciting projects and I thought, hmm, I was kind of diving deep into the realm of making chocolates and stuff like that, but I wanted to take it up a notch. So, I designed this model here in Fusion 360 and I printed it out on my very own Elegoo Neptune Max and it turned out really nice. I think this was a two to three day print. I used lightning infill, which didn't require a lot of material. Since this is FDM filament printed, it did have a lot of layer lines. So I added the addition of epoxy resin top coat. And this was a really good idea because the glossiness uh, of the epoxy, as you can see, did translate onto the actual mold itself. So you can see inside the mold that it does have a glossy finish. The thing is with silicone, if your surface is dull, that is how it will transfer onto the silicone. It is very, all the markings are very transferable. So you have to make sure when you have something that's 3D printed that it's post-processed to the max because every little imperfection will be transferred over. Uh, when I printed this and I shared this online, people were like, why did you print a hat? And I'm like, okay, I see what you're saying, but no, it's, it's not a hat. I mean, it could be. It's, you know, if I was in the 1920s. Just a quick side note here, I am using Smooth On Smooth Cell 940, which is a certified food safe silicone. Its pot life is about 30 minutes and its cure time is 24 hours. I would say it's a little bit tricky to work with in comparison to the other silicones I've dealt with. It's a like melted marshmallow consistency, which is super sticky and thick, but I love it because it is useful up to 400 degrees. It kind of looks odd because I don't have the top of the dome. The top of the dome allowed me to add the clamps, as you'll see in the video, to then pour the silicone and make that shape. So I would say overall, this was not the most efficient way of making this mold. Uh, as you can see, this is quite thick. It does have a lot of material. I used about a quart of silicone to make this. It's hefty, it's large, it's thick, it's heavy. However, one advantage to that is that it held its shape so nicely. Uh, you'll see a clip of me putting it into the oven and it's like, it did not budge. So I was very impressed by how it held up and I'm worried a bit if I make it too, too thin, then it might start to deform and then it will just be a weird looking cake. So I would say I learned a lot through this project. Uh, for example, I had a couple of design flaws that I definitely need to tackle. One thing with the actual 3D print here is that there were some ridges where, where the silicone was able to seep through. And this is because of my flaws as a designer. One thing I should have made sure of is that it was completely touching the base of the model and not having any crevices so that the silicone would come in and create a like a little lip or an overhang of some sort because that in turn caused some issues over here some silicone ripped a little bit but that only happened on the outer edges, so it wasn't too, too noticeable. However, it's still a flaw and it's still something I need to fix because um, if I do plan on manufacturing molds one day, I do not want them to be flawed. You need them to be perfect. They're molds for a reason, right? One thing about Smooth Cell 940 is that it is probably one of the most difficult silicones that I have worked with to this date. Um, I've worked with platinums, I work with tin, uh, but uh, this particular one was so thick that it was very difficult to mix and pour. And also, this was my mistake, but it did overflow in the vacuum chamber and it just went everywhere and it was a nightmare to clean. However, I did figure it out and um, I did pour it and everything, 
but I just had I just had enough silicone like I was so close to not having enough and also another thing with the flaws um, there were some gaps here so that's why I say it wasn't the most efficient method because there were air pockets left over that I was trying to avoid however um, for the most part the interior did look pretty nice okay so uh, one thing that I did prior to starting this project i went to a place called mccall's and they are actually like a cake decorating or baking warehouse i would say and they have so many different materials like they have endless molds they have endless sprinkles like every type of cake decorating thing that you can think of they have it's insane um it's essentially like a costco for baking it's madness uh so if you're into baking, I would definitely check it out if you're in the Toronto region. Um, but I'll show you a couple things that I got. So this little guy over here as that you'll see on my cake is actually candy. Uh, it's made out of sugar and some sort of like color topping on it. And also these two things. Um, these are like silver sprinkles sanding sugar and it is super shiny and pretty you don't really see its full shininess on camera but this is where the real deal comes in this is snow white shimmer dust and it is um essentially glitter it's mica powder and it's edible supposedly however um yeah, it's very gorgeous as a decorative item. And I just wanted to play around. I wanted to go full in and try it out and see what I could do because I'm technically making this cake for entertainment purposes. So I wanted it to look as, as nice as possible. I also got some, you'll see on the white cake that I made, I made two different cakes. The white cake has these wafers. So it's technically not chocolate. It has sugar and milk, so it's, not considered chocolate but it's sugar and milk uh, to form like an outer dome of my cake and it turned out really nice um, this is really good for casting and molds because it has like a really nice finish and um, you can add your like micas or you can add your um, uh, airbrush and stuff like that I think next time though I want to make uh, this was kind of like more of a design I want to make an actual item so whether it's something architectural based or a figure or something like that I want to make something a little bit more detailed um, but yeah overall I hope you enjoyed this video I had so much fun making it and if you did please like and subscribe and I'll see you next week with a new video bye Thank you.